This video gives an overview of the ADE31 Logic Boss from Abstract Data. I'll give a quick description of the module, then I'll demonstrate some of the features, and then I'll do some patches. The ADE31 is a 4 input, 12 output logic module. The 4 inputs are up here, and these are the 12 outputs. The module can be split into two separate stages, stage 1 and stage 2. And these stages can be linked or unlinked using these buttons, or via voltage control. Each stage has two NAND gates and one NOR gate. It also has the inverted outputs of these two logic types, giving two AND gates and one OR gate per stage. Let's start with explaining the stages, because that's really what makes the ADE31 different to standard logic modules. I'm using the module in unlinked mode. These LEDs here indicate whether the two stages are linked or not. I'll explain a bit more about what the two buttons do in a moment. You can see I've got a signal going into input 1. You can see that this first stage is operating, but the second stage is not. That's because the two stages are unlinked. There is no signal going to stage 2. Likewise, if I run this signal into input 3, only the second stage is operating. There is now no signal going to stage 1. If I run the same signal into inputs 1 and 3, then they're both doing the same thing. If I link the two stages by pressing these buttons, you can see that with only one input, both stages are now operating. Unlinked, one stage only, linked, both stages are operating. This switching can also be done by voltage control. I'm going to unlink the stages so the LEDs are off. I'm going to put an LFO into input 4. Input 4 is now used as a switch to link and unlink the two stages. You can see that when input 4 goes high, the two stages are linked, but when input 4 goes low, the two stages are unlinked. Now by adding a signal to input 3, you've created three separate patterns. What stage 1 is doing and what stage 2 is doing as it links and then as it unlinks. So one last feature to explain and then we'll get onto some patches. I've got another signal running into the last input here, that's input 2. Internally, the output of one of the logic blocks in stage 1 is wired to the inputs of two of the logic blocks in stage 2. So not only can I link and unlink stages, I can choose which half of the stage I want to link or unlink. You can see that I can do this manually. This is both stages linked, this is one half of the stage linked, this is the other half of the stage linked, or I can do it via voltage control using input 4. Let's have a look at this patch. I've got four parts here. I've got a kick drum, a bass line, a white noise, percussion, and I've got this background drone. The kick drum is coming out of the NOR gate here. That's triggering an A140 ADSR, and then the kick drum itself is coming from over here from the Abstract Data ADE20. The bass line is from these two AND outputs, again from stage one of the ADE31, and I'm summing them. And the bass line itself comes from a tip top audio Z3000 via a uh, SEM20 voltage control filter. The third part is this hand clap. I'm using the gate to trigger an ADSR, which is running a, uh, a white noise. And finally, this last output, which is the sawtooth wave via a filter SE3. This output here, which is the second AND gate in the second stage, is being used to modulate the feedback control, the feedback CV control of an abstract data ADE10. The second part of stage two is unlinked, the LED is off, and the first part of stage two is linked. Now, if I unlink stage two entirely, you can hear that variation in the hand clap. So again, in this patch, we've got three inputs and four outputs. The inputs for this patch are coming from a single ADSR. So it's a, a derp for A1432 quad ADSR. And each input is the attack, the decay, and the release section of that envelope. So it's a single envelope giving us all these patterns. I'm operating it in linked mode. So all the inputs cascade through all the outputs. So each of these four outputs is in turn triggering one of one, two, three, four ADSRs. And you can hear each of those in turn. I've got this nice lower billowy sub pad going on here. I've got the higher pitched call and response pad going on here. This is triggering the middle pad. And this last one is this nice little bell type patch that I've got, which is using the multi-mode filter, the ADE20. For this third and final patch, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of other ways you can use the ADE31. This unit is being triggered by a single LFO. The first input here is coming from the sine wave output of the LFO. The second input here is coming from the ramp output or the sawtooth output of the LFO. 
The third input is coming from the triangle wave output of the LFO, and the linking and unlinking of the stages is actually done by the square wave of the same LFO. So by using a single LFO, everything is pretty much synced because all the outputs are in phase, but you've still got some really nice off-counter variations. The outputs for these, again I've got four outputs as you can see, these first three outputs, all of them are driving a tip-top Z8000 sequencer. I've got one that is driving the clock, I've got an output that is resetting the horizontal direction, and an output that is resetting the vertical direction. And I've got the Z3000 running three VCOs, and I'm running each VCO straight into a mixer. And you can hear that first kind of lead line, which is a sawtooth output, and the second the higher harmony and the kind of bell-like noise up the top there. And again, just to keep it all in rhythm, I've got the ADE20 providing a sub, kind of a low end drop there. The sub pattern again is the gate output there, triggering an ADSR, which is driving the ADE20. 